if you're looking for an easy and simple way to publish your notes from Obsidian to the internet for other people to read, Obsidian's new publish service might be for you. Hello folks, my name is Justin with Effective Remote Work and today we're going to do a brief overview and review of Obsidian Publish. Before we dive into today's topic on the video, I wanted to let you know of something new that we're trying out. We are launching a brand new Discord community over on discord.com. There will be a link to invite you to that community in the description below. I would love to see and chat with you over there. If you're interested in getting started with Obsidian Publish, you can head on over to the website at obsidian.md. In the upper right hand corner, there's a publish uh, link that you can click on. This takes you to the landing page for the publish feature. There are a number of features that are in Obsidian Publish and a few more that are coming, but basically you get a site like this. If I pop open my site, which is publish.obsidian.md slash Justin, you get something like this. Now I have a little bit of work yet to do on mine. I'm still in the process of uploading some files and cleaning it all up, but you get the sense. There are a couple different notes that are in here. You get links to notes you get an interactive graph view, and you can see that I have some custom CSS on here, which I'm not entirely happy with yet, but you get some customizability with it. The whole point of Obsidian Publish is to take your local note vault and publish either part of it or all of it to the internet. There's a trend on the internet right now called digital gardens. And what's neat about this trend is that it's a place where you're cultivating information and ideas on the internet kind of out in the open. So instead of having a blog that's super formal and very polished, you have a place where you're just sharing thoughts on an article that you read or a book that you're into or just sharing ideas that you have about topic areas that you're passionate about. In essence, it kind of harkens back to the days of old uh, on the internet where people had blogs and they weren't just trying to sell stuff. They were writing about their life experiences. They were writing about things they were passionate about and they had a network of people that they were able to connect with as a result of that. Let's take a second to learn a little bit more about how much Obsidian Publish costs. If we head on over to the pricing section on the website, you can see there are a couple of different ways you can support the developers if you haven't done so already. Definitely recommend doing so, but if you're looking at Obsidian Publish, you can also pay on a regular basis for that as well. There's a sync service that's coming too, not quite yet available, but be watching for that. Publish is currently $8 a month, but it's billed annually, so that comes out to $96 US dollars. And you might be asking, why is that so expensive? Well, the developers have said they're interested in competing with other softwares such as Ghost or WordPress.com and try to, to stay comparably priced with that. There are some features that they have yet to add, which we'll get to in just a few minutes. But all in all, I think Obsidian Publish is a great starting point publishing feature if you're interested in using Obsidian to publish your thoughts and ideas. Let's jump into the software and take a look at what this looks like inside of Obsidian. To get going with Obsidian Publish inside of your vault, there are a couple things that you need to do first and foremost. First, you have to go into settings and make sure that you've signed into your account under the account tab uh, after you've paid for Obsidian Publish on the website. Then you have to go under plugin and make sure that you've scrolled all the way to the bottom and turned on the publish plugin. This is what enables Obsidian to interact with the API that they've created along with your account. You can subscribe to hosting multiple sites. I've done just one so far, my own personal site. We'll see where it goes from there. Once you've signed in and turned on the publish plugin, this little airplane icon shows up in the left-hand bar where you can publish changes. When you open this up, you'll get a window like this. Uh, you can initially start off by naming your site here. Um, I don't have the capability to do that on this video today, but you'll get an option to choose a name for your site. I chose Justin. And from there, you can start to select which files you want to publish. I've structured mine so that I have a set of private notes and then the majority of my vault is published. And then when you've made changes to your vault, 
you can go ahead under new and then check the files that you want to publish and then push them up to the web. Now it does take a little while for those changes to go live on your website, but they are there and they'll be visible for everyone to take a look at. It's pretty handy. This is just really a very light overview of what Obsidian Publish has to offer. And I wanted to take a little bit of time to get into a review. I've been using Obsidian Publish for a couple of weeks now, and so I wanted to give you my thoughts and opinions on what I liked and what I see could be improved in the software. Firstly, I love the fact that Obsidian Publish gives me a really easy way to share my thoughts, things that I'm thinking about, things that I'm processing through. I've been on the search for a software like this for a very long time. Initially, when Twitter came out, I was an early adopter of that service, and I loved being able to share my thoughts and ideas, but when that platform grew and it became a little bit more toxic or not necessarily the most friendly place to share things all of the time, my interest really waned in it. And then I turned to something like microblog, and I've had multiple blogs over the course of the years, and feeling like I have to have something polished or something that's extremely social wasn't something that I was after. I really just wanted a place where I can openly share my thoughts, and if people are interested in engaging with them, they can. And that's what I feel Obsidian Publish delivers for me. It's a safe and easy place for me to put my thoughts out on the internet. It's not very social, which I'm not really interested in, but it's also a place where that people can kind of dig in and discover what I'm really thinking about. The other thing I really like about Obsidian Publish is the fact that it's very easy to set up. All you have to do is sign up on the website, sign in with your account in Obsidian, click the publish button after you've turned on the plugin, and you're good to go. Just a couple of settings that you can change in there, and it's already on the web. However, there is some challenges with that workflow that I have found. It often feels technical. I've moved a lot of files around to try to figure out the best structure for my vault for working with Obsidian Publish because I do have a subset of notes that I do not want to publish to that site, but there are a majority of them in my vault that I am okay having public. I've made a number of changes, and as a result of making those changes, I've had to check a lot of boxes in the Obsidian Publish settings. So for example, I moved a lot of notes around in between folders. When you do this in Obsidian Publish, what happens is that it causes them to look like they've been deleted, which they have. It's very similar to how Git works, where if you move a file from one directory into another one, it treats it as deleted in the old directory and created in the new one. So you end up having to check all the boxes on those folders and those files to publish those changes appropriately. If you don't check on the deleted ones and update those to the server, then those files are still there along with the newly updated versions of those files that you just changed or moved them into a different directory. When you're making large changes like this, the process of publishing can feel highly technical and tedious. It's not a bad thing per se, but it's just something you have to get used to. If you've used something like Jekyll or Gatsby to publish a statically generated website, this is going to feel fairly familiar. You're using similar ideas to Git version history and so on and so forth. But if you're not a very technical person, it, there are a couple areas in the UI that you could get tripped up. Now, there are a number of features that are not yet implemented in Obsidian Publish, the first of which that I'm most excited about is the ability to use a custom domain. Right now, you are stuck with a publish.obsidian.md slash whatever name that you chose for your published site. But in the future, you will be able to use a custom domain. I'm excited to throw mine up at something like notes.justinderose.com and restructure how my personal website looks so that I have a place for this to rest on the internet. Some other features that are upcoming according to the website are password protected sites, a tag pane, which would be really helpful if you're using tags heavily inside of your vault, header links, which you can link to headers on the page themselves, uh, similar to how you do header links inside of Obsidian as it is, and then a site search, which one of the drawbacks as well with Obsidian Publish is that it does not function like a blog. So when you add new content, there's no chronological feed for it. It's still in a networked state. So there might be new files, but there's not necessarily an easy or good way to 
notify people that they are there. If you're looking for an easy, straightforward, not crazy technical way to share your thoughts on the internet without having to feel that they're super polished, I think Obsidian Publish is a very interesting option. Sure, you can use sites like WordPress, you can use Ghost, you can use a static site generator to throw a blog up on the internet. You can also use one of those tools to create a digital garden of sorts out there as well. I think Obsidian Publish is a great addition to that field, but I'm interested to hear what you have to say. Let me know in the comments what you think about Obsidian Publish and if it's something that you think you would use. Lastly, if you found this video helpful, please be sure to subscribe. Again, my name is Justin with Effective Remote Work. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you in the next video.